I've wondered if there's some alternate universe where I could have, you know, continued along the path with the, you know, the personal training and the, you know, powerlifting and all that stuff and, and possibly have been happy in that. I guess, I mean, I guess the answer is simply no, because it, I, I ended up going, coming back to this, um, this meaning acting, uh, and performing, I don't know what it is, but I guess that's always, that desire has always been there. And even when I went into the world of personal training and powerlifting, you know, I would still make videos that I thought were funny. And like, uh, you know, I had a, the, the blog that I was writing. And, and I think that, I mean, in some ways I hate to pair it to its perhaps basis need, but maybe it's a matter of like seeking validation in a way, you know, um, I guess you could just call it enjoyment. I mean, it depends how you look at it. It's either enjoyment or filling an empty hole that many performers seem to have, especially people with comedic sensibilities. Um, but I've, yeah, I've always just really, uh, I've always really enjoyed it and been drawn to it. And it seems like it, I just ended up kind of coming back around naturally. And I, and I feel like I never really took myself out of it entirely, but yeah, in order to make it a career and a living, it has to have, you know, it doesn't have to. One can get very lucky and lucky to be doing it at all for a living. But to really make a go at it, it has to be kind of the main focus, I think, of one's life. And, um, and I suppose it just came into focus for me after I had done a certain amount in, in the world of uh, the fitness industry that I, it seemed like it, it made sense to move back to performing. When it comes to my goals, I, I can't really see beyond them usually at the time. Um, I think, and I've done this in many different fields and I, you know, I was a magician for a while and I taught self-defense for a while and then I competed in powerlifting and I was a personal trainer. And in each of these things, I've pursued them probably equally aggressively, but didn't know that I was actually truly done with it until pretty close to being like done with it, you know, like, and then just, I put it aside and I kind of don't ever look back, you know, and people ask if I, you know, miss magic or, you know, less so ask if I miss self-defense or martial arts or powerlifting or personal training. And I, I guess I don't because I feel like I do it to the fullest of my ability. And then I say, there's nothing more I can do here at least there's nothing more I could have done in that amount of time. You know, maybe there's more I could continue to do, but at some point you weigh out the, the amount that you can achieve versus what you'd be sacrificing for it. And, and I guess to me, uh, that's sort of at the end of the road for the, the fitness stuff. It just, you know, I, my last year I did three, I was nationally ranked in three weight classes in the deadlift, you know, and then I did a bodybuilding competition and then I did a powerlifting competition like three weeks after that. And, and then I was kind of like, I don't know there's a whole lot more I can do unless frankly I wanted to gain 40 pounds and move up like another weight class or two, you know, I, but, uh, <clears throat> so it became, I guess, pretty clear to me. There was times when, you know, I guess I never would have considered it a failure if I never went back to acting because I would just consider it a, a recalibration of my goal. And weirdly, I, I recognize that this maybe sounds strange, but <clears throat> I don't think I've ever really failed at achieving a goal, but that's because I think I'm very, very specific about how I set my goals. And I don't ever say I'm gonna do something if there's pretty much not a guarantee that I can do it. And, you know, I think even, you know, when it came to, and I think part of that comes from the world of, you know, powerlifting and, as well as, you know, it's a very objective field. It's numbers based, you know, you don't get to skip five steps, you know, but when I started out and I would just kind of aim for a little more, you know, and I think when I started deadlifting the first time I deadlifted, you know, 300 pounds, I wasn't saying I'm, I'm going to deadlift 500 pounds. I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to deadlift 315 pounds, which is three plates on each side. Cause that'll be cool. And then you get to that and you're like, well, what's the next thing? It's, you know, maybe 350, you know, but that way, and maybe this is just some weird self-protective mechanism, but you know, it, it you never, for me, I never really felt like I could fail because I was only aiming for a little more than I had before. And I, I think in the acting world, I sort of broke it down by even the idea that I wanted to start by booking, 
small five line roles in television. And once I had accumulated enough of those, I'd start to I'd say no to those and move on to guest stars. Once I did those, I would, you know, a number of those, I'd move on to series regular or film stuff. Um, I knew that it didn't, it doesn't work that incrementally, but in my mind, if I could put the effort, if I could put as much effort as possible into it, if I could imagine that there's a world in which luck does not exist, then I will work in the optimal way to reach my goals. And should I be so lucky that something comes along and helps me skip some steps, that's great. But I'm not depending on that and I'm not setting my expectations that way. And that's what happened. You know, I had a couple of these small roles and uh, Orange is the New Black came along and that was a small role with the potential to recur. And, you know, it was before Netflix, anyone knew it was a thing. And I got in when the, you know, when they weren't looking for names and, you know, and and they were willing to end up write for me, writing for me when they saw that I was uh, doing what they liked. And, and then the show exploded and that's sort of, has allowed me to skip some steps, but I, I like to think that I was still stealing myself for the, the long haul, you know, and, and not expecting to get, you know, uh, like picked out by a movie producer while I was like choosing melons at the supermarket or something. You know, at the end of the day, it, I, the luck factor for me was booking Orange is the New Black, you know, um, it, it's been such a hit, you know, and it, you kind of, you can't plan for that, you know, but at the time I would have, I would have been on any show if they asked me to be on it. Like it doesn't, it didn't matter. So it's not like I had the foresight to say, this is the one and bet on this horse. You know, it's just like, that's the only horse I could bet on. It just so happened that this was like a, a big hit. And I'd like to think that even if it wasn't orange and I don't know, even if I was still plugging along kind of where where-ish I was before that I would still be climbing and making progress you know and, and that and that would be the thing that would kind of be important to me in terms of making sure that I felt validated and motivated moving forwards for me I've always been a you know goals accomplishing goals has been the most sort of rewarding part of my life and something that I've been very good at for a long period of time for I think some of the reasons we just discussed taking it slowly incrementally being, I think, in a healthy way, emotionally detached from the the achievement of that goal. But this is the first time in my life where my, my goal has shifted from accomplishing the most I can accomplish as an actor to being the happiest human that I can be. And I think it's a lot of times in life, many people associate success with happiness. And I think some of us logically, we know that's not true because you see, you know, lots of famous loved actors overdosing and you know and living terrible depressed lives all the time but i still think that that feeling is there and i understand that and in some ways you know with what fame brings there's a certain level of validation that you just can't even approximate with anything else i think that i've accomplished enough externally that part of me needs to, is working on being better at just appreciating those things. Um, I think that getting, you know, I don't think that being the biggest movie star in the world is gonna be the thing that's gonna make me happiest in the world anymore. Uh, but you, you know, still movies that I wanna do that would probably correlate with that and, you know, um, but I, it's, it's my goals have sort of shifted and it's, it's more about appreciating what I have and, Part of that is also maybe my utilitarian part of me knows that wanting it more than I currently do anyway is not necessarily the way for me to get it. You know, I, I think sometimes it's better to walk in an audition room saying, I could get the job or I couldn't. You know, you don't put the pressure on yourself. You end up going in free and I think people sense that. So, I don't know, I'm very, very good at psyching myself out and, and I think that efficiency is my superpower. So part of me wonders almost if that's me like, pumping in the brakes in a way that, you know, it's dangerous to be like, oh, from here I'm gonna do this and this and this, and I think that's a very dangerous place to put yourself because there's certainly been people who've had more career than I've had who've ended up, you know, a lot lower. Um, so I don't know, yeah, maybe that's my way of just kind of keeping an even, an even keel about it.